piety isn't a fashionable quality in these dark days. And yet piety is a gift from God. It is a gift that Almighty God poured into your soul at baptism and which he strengthened through the sacrament of confirmation. Piety is a gift which our Blessed Mother exercised to a heroic degree. Today I want to explain how Our Lady should be our model and guide in our exercise of the gift of piety. Piety is a gift of the Holy Spirit which builds upon the natural virtue of religion. The virtue of religion is a habit of giving God his due, recognising that he is your creator who deserves obedience and worship from you, that God is everything, that it is only because of his continued will that we have any existence at all. We all try and be aware of human rights, but how accustomed are you towards remembering that God has rights, and in fact, he has a claim upon you before anyone and anything else. Remember, our Lord teaching us that the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. So when God asks us something through his church, even if the teaching sounds hard, someone filled with the virtue of religion promptly replies, because you have asked it, Lord, I will do it. What a wonderful virtue and how much it pleases God. It's also a virtue that Our Lady characterizes. Mother Mary not only accepted fully and completely God's commands of her, she also obeyed the Almighty at times when she lacked a full understanding of what he was asking of her. And for Our Lady, to serve God was always delightful. How did she manage to do this? Our Lady was able to obey God promptly and lovingly because God had given her the gift of piety. Piety is that gift which makes loving and serving God something sweet and delightful. It perfects the natural virtue of religion. No longer are we merely obeying as servants. We become sons and daughters in Christ, in love with the will of our Father in heaven. In the history of the false religions, we find many people trying their best, slavishly performing rituals in hope of appeasing some deity. People worshipping fearsome gods with strict obedience, following the natural virtue of religion. My word, these pagans could never have imagined that the fearsome creator God, that this God would also be a God of love, a God who sought the love of his creatures. And even among the Jews, piety was a rare gift. We read in the history of that once chosen people how God sought their love time and time again. And yet due to sin, thousands of years passed since the fall of our first parents, during which God's love was spurned, ignored and poorly responded to. But then from the heart of the young Jewish maiden Mary, when as a child she made her first simple prayers to God, that long era of unrequited love ended and the vast love of God met with the human love that responded to his call according to its human measure perfectly. And it was this that hastened the coming of the Messiah. She loved him and he loved her. Piety is something not just invisible, it's something that necessarily manifests itself. It's a response of the entire person in the service of Almighty God. And so piety looks a certain way. Piety among Catholics in the true religion, 
piety can be seen kneeling before the blessed sacrament in a holy hour kissing a crucifix out of love for your savior it's feeling a deep heart inside of you when you see others sin or speak against our holy faith piety is being moved to tears in contemplating the suffering that christ endured for you piety is looking forward in the middle of the night to receiving jesus the next day in holy communion piety is then receiving him with utmost reverence devotion and silence piety is sitting silently in god's presence knowing that he is very close and that he loves you and we can see all of these in the life of the blessed virgin it was piety that led Mary, when she was only three years old, to enter the temple to live in God's service. It was piety that moved her as she kissed her infant child and worshipped him as her God. And it was piety that led her to stand at the foot of the cross and suffer as she saw others despising the king of love. And the gift of piety affects the whole person Piety is the outward manifestation of a heart on fire with love for God and for his Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. St Francis de Sales used to say, When the house is on fire, everything is thrown out of the window. All the worldly things get thrown out. And when a heart is on fire, on fire with love for Christ, only he matters. Everything else is discarded. What needs to be thrown out of my heart? What things do I love which are obstacles to true devotion to Christ? Are there TV shows I'm watching that only have worldly values? Is there bad company I'm associating with? Have I seen impurities? Perhaps I'm guilty simply of covetously guarding my free time. I'm willing to let Christ be the centre of my life. Some people, I think, have the impression that piety, as I've described it, is some kind of religious attention-seeking. But piety, manifesting the movements of the heart through the body, is natural for anyone who is in love. It's love that changes ostentation or showing us into piety. Love changes are going through the motions into the romantic gestures of a lover. I mean, a person in love treats a beloved with such gentleness and such attentiveness. Their whole life revolves around the beloved. Whether it's their fiance, their husband, their baby, or some perhaps a disabled relative they're caring for love is manifested in gestures it's not wor just words if it were words alone it wouldn't be love we know from scripture that faith without works is dead we could easily add love without works is dead love must manifest itself piety is the gift from god by which we respond lovingly and obediently to him using our human gestures of affection Others kiss the baby Jesus, some perhaps with great ostentation, but none kissed like Mary. Many can say that they were present on that Friday when Christ carried the cross of our salvation, but none were present as Mary was, sharing his pain as a sword in her heart. Is my faith just showing us, or is it piety? When I enter the church, even if I'm on my own, do I do so with modesty and devotion, humility, entering the house of my Lord and Master? Am I embarrassed to kiss the holy statues or let others catch a glimpse of me in prayer? When I receive Holy Communion, is it a kiss of love, pressed straight on my lips, or something routine, something casual, something I would even dare to receive into my hand. Piety, true piety, changes completely the way we approach God, the way we serve him, the way we show our love for him. 
Sadly, in these dark days, some people, even within the true church, look on pious Catholics as if they were a deformity, as if they belonged in the Middle Age, as if there was something embarrassing or shameful in loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. But in fact, that is the first greatest commandment. It's the first condition for heaven. And if you miss the first commandment, it doesn't matter about any of the rest, whether you've never stole, never had an impure thought, never lied, you are going to be damned. You're going to be lost. But conversely, if you spend your life wrapped up in fulfillment of the first commandment, in loving the Lord, in taking delight in his company, in serving him alone, you can almost forget about the other nine. They look after themselves because for the one who loves God, the idea, the thought of offending him is completely abhorrent. Let us then turn to our Immaculate Mother and ask her to teach us how to love God who is waiting in the tabernacle. Mother Mary, the Lord Jesus was always on your mind. When you were a child, you longed for him as a Messiah. As a young girl, you dedicated yourself in his service in the temple, looking after the holy things there with utmost reverence. During your pregnancy, your desire to see the face of God grew as a child within you grew. At the Saviour's birth, you nursed him who created the universe and cuddled him when he was cold. Through his holy childhood, many saw you and wondered. Some thought you were crazy. Others probably scoffed that your devotion to your son was excessive. But Mary, you were filled with the gift of piety. And it was God himself who stirred up such devotion within you. And although 20 centuries have passed since those days, we beg you, your children, to teach us how to love your son how to speak to him with soft words, how to share our lives with him and to receive him in holy communion as you did with utmost love and devotion as you knelt down to receive our blessed Lord from the hands of St. John. Our hearts are cold, O Mary, but we beg you, draw your heart close to ours that we may be a people overflowing with the gift of piety a people ablaze with loving devotion for our blessed Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.